Free agency is almost here, but the Texans re-signed a few of their own this week. Let's give a grade to the moves already in the books for Houston. Welcome into the channel. I'm Cody Stutes. Let's talk some Texans and let's get the big marker out and give some grades to the Houston Texans re-signings this week. Highlighted by tight end Dalton Schultz and kicker Kaimi Fairbairn sticking around and then added to this weekend as safety Eric Murray, defensive tackle Khalil Davis, and cornerback Desmond King are back with the Texans as well. So let's put some grades on these players, on these re-signings, and what we think the Texans have done so far. And I think it's important here to sort of establish the grading rubric. As I put on my fake glasses to make myself look a tiny bit smarter here. The rubric is going to be tough. To get an A+, plus, to get an A in a signing is going to be very difficult. That player needs to be one of the best players in football or could be one of the best players at their position, and the Texans need to slightly win the deal. Okay, if they slightly win the deal and that player is really good, boom, A+, plus or an A. But to get to that level and some of the players that we're going to talk about, you're not going to see some A pluses or some A's get thrown around. But if it's a nice contract, it's a nice player, you didn't overpay too much, that's when you get into the B range, B plus range. And then C's and D's are massive overpays. I don't believe the player is a fit or is any good. I don't anticipate a lot of C's and D's, but hey, if the Texans go out there and pay Christian Wilkins $25 million a year, I'm not giving that an A. I'm not giving that an A+. Plus. I'm probably not giving that a B either. That'd be way too expensive. So the money, the type of player, and what the expected role is for that player on the Texans is all how we go into grading these players. The five players the Texans were able to keep this week are right here. Tight end Dalton Schultz, kicker Kaimi Fairbairn, safety Eric Murray, cornerback Desmond King, and defensive tackle Khalil Davis. Let's get the uh, grading pin out and start throwing some grades here. Let's work bottom to top here. Khalil Davis, nice player, showed up as a depth piece for this team, previously played for a couple of NFL teams and then also in the USFL. And the Texans are able to keep him for a defensive tackle room that's sort of short on talent. You know, Sheldon Rankins is a free agent. Hassan Ridgeway didn't work out. He's a free agent. Only Malik Collins and Kurt Heinish were under a contract when it comes to defensive tackles. And so to bring back Khalil Davis as a depth piece at defensive tackle, that's a nice move. And so uh, not a huge investment, not a huge role to play for the team. And if he's one of the only guys that you bring back in free agency for the defensive tackle spot, it might look worse when it's all said and done. But for right now, bringing back Khalil Davis, that's a solid beat. Are there upgrades for Khalil Davis? Probably. Are there players that are better than him in free agency? Probably. Is it a contract that's terrible, horrible, keeps you from doing anything else? No. No, it doesn't. And so a B for Cleo Davis bringing him back. It's a nice depth piece. If the Texans go and invest in a defensive tackle, we know they like to rotate that defensive line quite a bit throughout the game. So Khalil Davis is a nice depth piece. Desmond King coming back. Now, King started the season in training camp with the Texans. He got cut. He bounced around a little bit. They brought him back mid-season when Tavier Thomas was struggling. Ultimately, Thomas got hurt. King took over the nickel cornerback spot, the slot cornerback spot, and played really, really well. Had a couple of games where he led the team in tackles. He had a couple of games where he'd probably want a few of those plays back, but this is a very weak free agency class. This is a free agency class at cornerback that does not have a lot of options that are really exciting. King, obviously he played inside for the Texans last year. He can play a little bit of outside as well. The contract is not something crazy, some big investment. It's a couple of million bucks. If it checks out in the best way for Desmond King, it can escalate to a couple million bucks. This one's getting a B plus for me because he played really well for the Texans once he got back to the team. It's not a good free agency class for cornerbacks. It's a very attractive cornerback class when it comes to rookies. Well, your commitment to King, just a one-year deal, doesn't keep you from drafting a rookie and, hey, oh, maybe learning from Desmond King as he's sticking around. So we'll go B plus for Desmond King and the commitment that the Texans made to him. Eric Murray is next up. And this one, 
I'm going to go with a C plus here. That's probably the ugliest C I've ever made in my entire life. I'm going to go C plus for Eric Murray. Now, this one is not being totally fair to Eric Murray, but I would think now with Jimmy Ward and Jalen Petrie as the starters, MJ Stewart is still on the team as a backup, and now Eric Murray is in the fold as a backup. And the way the Texans used Murray prior to his injury last year, with all of this, I'm kind of hurting Eric Murray a little bit with something that I wanted the Texans to do. I don't believe they're going to invest in Justin Simmons, the free agent safety that I feel like could absolutely be a big time game changer for the Houston Texans. So that hurts Murray a little bit. That's one of those things where right now it's uh, that's it from the safety spot for the Texans. There's some free agents that I would like for them to chase. There's even some draft picks, which they could still make the draft pick commitment even though they have Murray under contract but just somebody else maybe would have been a little bit more exciting he's not a bad player and if he comes back healthy the Texans trusted him a lot last year this is a grade I'm going to put a little star next to it because I might end up changing this grade when it is all said and done I don't see Khalil Davis or Desmond King's grade changing as free agency rolls on this might be one that if the safety market gets kind of weird or Simmons ended up costing a lot more money than I expected him to cost, that I would change this. So I'm going to say C-plus for Eric Murray right now, but I reserve the right to change this one uh, down the road when we go back and look at the entire hall of free agency for the Texans. Kaimi Fairbairn, the kicker for the Texans, one of the most accurate kickers in all of football over the past few seasons. He had one field goal miss in the regular season, one extra point miss in the regular season, and then, of course, he had that field goal miss in the playoffs that is heavy on people's minds. Changing kickers is a nauseating exercise. Go ask the San Francisco 49ers who spent a mid-round pick on a kicker, and that guy was not reliable for them as much as Kaimi Fairbairn has been reliable for the Houston Texans. He's got a big leg. He's not the best kicker in football. He's not the second best kicker in football, probably. He's not paid like that. He's compensated at a level that if he'd hit free agency, he probably makes a tiny bit more than what the Texans ultimately gave him. And there were no ways that the Texans could have gone and replacing Kaimi Fairbairn that would have made me feel good about the direction that they're going. So I'm going to give Kaimi Fairbairn's re-signing an A- Minus. Okay, you thought I was going to go A, A plus there. The A minus. He's not the best kicker in football. He's not going to become the best kicker in football, but it's a really good deal for the Texans because the options outside of Fairbairn were really poor options. I don't trust a rookie kicker or some kicker off the street in street free agency or even any of these other free agent kickers. I don't trust them. So Fairbairn gets an A Minus Now, Dalton Schultz, that was a player that I felt like the Texans absolutely had to keep. I did not like the free agency options. One of those actually came off the board this week when Hunter Henry re-signed with the New England Patriots. So that wouldn't have even been an option to replace Dalton Schultz. I don't trust rookies at the tight end spot when the Texans are where they are as a team and they really need to really put the foot on the gas in 2024. So re-signing Dalton Schultz was a good one. They paid pretty much market value. Maybe he gets slightly more in free agency if he hits free agency, but they paid a pretty penny. And I know it's only the 11th average annual value, but he got a lot of guaranteed money compared to some of these other tight end contracts. So that's going to keep it from being an A-, minus, but a B-plus for Dalton Schultz is certainly within the realm of fairness when you're putting a grade on this Texans free agency move. Well, I guess pre-free agency move. So a B-plus for Dalton Schultz. I like him. I felt like they had to bring him back. They paid a pretty penny. That was the cost of doing business. So the Texans didn't, quote, win that that deal. But Schultz didn't absolutely crush him either. Uh, Could they have done the one-year commitment with the franchise tag? Sure, but then that ties up more money this year. Ultimately, a very good deal. Schultz, not one of the best tight ends in football. Not going to be one of the best tight ends in football, but he's going to be solidly in that second, maybe even third tier for some people, but solidly in that conversation, I believe, to get into somewhere in that second tier. Maybe it's the bottom of the second tier, but he's a nice player, and I feel like he's going to be even better this season with the Texans than he was last year. So a B plus on Schultz, an A minus on Kaimi Fairbairn, 
Eric Murray gets a C plus with a star next to it because, well, uh, I reserve the right to change my grade on that one. A B plus for Desmond King because of the way that free agency is set to shake out with these cornerbacks and just how well he played when he did come back to the Texans last year. And a B for Khalil Davis as a depth piece and a guy that the Texans brought back. What are your grades on these moves so far? What do you think about Professor Cody's grades? Let me know in the comment section down below. You don't want to miss out on anything going on in the comment section. Always getting after it in the comment section, responding, having big conversations, getting some ideas for future videos as well. You guys do a great job in the comment section. On your way down to the comment section, throw me a thumbs up on the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And in the description, you'll find out about my friends at Underdog Fantasy. Underdog Fantasy, the best way to play fantasy sports. Get your season-long underdog best ball baseballs in. Okay, put the drafts together. Grab a couple of players. You can even do pick them with player predictions, okay? Higher or lower on home runs. I'm going higher on Jordan Alvarez's home runs, by the way. Season-long pick are available. And if you're like me, maybe you just sprinkle an entry into hockey every now and then. This McKinnon fella for the Avalanche, I don't know a lot about hockey. Give me a break. He's very good. I go higher on one and a half points for him. It hits almost every time. Put him with a basketball play, and it's a lot of fun. It's very easy to play. Underdog is fantastic, and you're going to get two times your first deposit when you use my link in the description down below and use my code STOOTS. That's S-T-O-O-T-S, Underdog Fantasy. Underdog, the best way to play fantasy. Appreciate you watching the video. Appreciate you tuning in. Hope you enjoyed it. So much more free agency conversation coming your way, and I can't wait until we talk Texans again soon.